Hi everybody, Roberta Montagnini here, and in today's video I'm so excited to be sharing with you another fine art retouching. Before I get started, I wanted to invite you to visit my website, which is right here, and right here, right there. And you can see some of my fine artwork right here, some of women portraits, family and children, business portraits, and some of my awards as well. You can just scroll through, have a look. I'm really proud of this work. It took me, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of time to create those things, um, and I'm very passionate about what I do. So please go to my website, have a look. If you like anything and would like to know how I edit, just ask away, and I might, you know, create a new tutorial inspired on something I already did. All right. So uh, the image I'm going to work today is this one here. And it's a beautiful image of uh, Serena. I created an image of her before, which is this one here right on my website in the middle. And I won first place at the teen and senior category at the Portrait Masters 2019, which was awesome. And so I'm going to edit another image of her right here. And I just want you to have a look. And if you learn, you know, if you if you want to, um, if you have any questions about my process or anything, just ask. I'll try to answer it later. But it should be simple. Uh, I also create a set of new actions that will be available for sale soon. I'm testing it out this week just to make sure everything is pristine. I use them all the time, and it really speeds up my workflow. So uh, that's it. I'm going to. Just delete my camera right now. Here, just hide this. Um, and now I'm just going to use this window. <clears throat> okay, so uh, to begin with, I'm going to click on my retouching quick setup. And that creates this panel for me so, you know, it's ready to go. So now uh, with my um, healing brush, I'm going to go over her skin and just rem remove any obvious blemishes or anything that, you know, um, doesn't feel that it's like even. So I'm just going to do this. It's very quick. She doesn't have many uh, pimples, just a lot, a little bit of uh, blemishes on her skin, just uneven, uneven skin tone. Some acne marks. So just do like this. I might come back to this later. For now, I think it should be fine. I don't think there, there is much. Okay, so, uh, oh, also I forgot to say, before I started this image, I had already done some editing. So you can see here a quick before and after because the corset was too big on her. So I just adjusted it to fit her form better. Um, and then I fixed the flyaways on her hair and I fixed the background as well, just to speed things up. All right. So now after I cleaned my layer, the healing with the healing brush, this is what I've done so far. Those dots here. I will go on the dodge uh, layer here, the dodge and burn. I'll make sure I activate it. So it's black and white because black and white helps you to edit the image without uh, the, any color distraction. So it's more efficient in a way. I sometimes do not use the layer. I edit straight like, you know, like this because I'm used to editing quite a bit. Um, but this really helps you to keep focused on... Uh, you know, even on even out of the tones. So this is a way to edit an image, but it's not the way you can use dodge and burn. You can use frequency separation and you can use something that I discovered a few, few weeks, no, a few months ago. It was quite nice. So I'm just going to hide this black and white layer right now. And I'm going to create another black and white layer. And I'm going to put the switch, uh, the red to the right and the, the yellow to the right. And now all you can see is the, the darker on her skin that needs to be even, you know, and fixed. So now you can click on the dodge layer here, select your brush and make sure it's set to 30 and 30 like that. And I can just click, well, actually I think it needs to be 100 opacity and 10. Let's do 10 flow. And then here I will just paint 
over the blemishes like this because she has quite a bit of unevenness on her skin I wouldn't recommend doing a full dodge and burn because you'll be here a long time um, but this helps uh, you to see the image um, it helps you know fine-tuning to the next step so I'm just gonna show you now what the image looks like so just gonna do a few bits here okay let's see a before and after so I'm gonna hide this dark layer and you, here you can see a before and after and more precise these are the areas where I touched so there is quite a bit of a difference. It does help. The good thing with dodge and burn is that you kept you, you normally keep the layers, um, the skin tone, and the the the, 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 the image as in, you know as a whole more uh, natural to how it is. Uh, so you, you don't change too much the person, if, if that makes sense. I'm still trying to work on my English while I talk to the camera. It's quite uh, intimidating to be honest, but I'm gonna do it regardless. Okay, so the other thing you can do now, I'm just gonna drag this black and white out. I just think dodge and burn for this kind of work right now, uh, it's gonna be too time consuming, so I'll come back to it later. Right now, I'm just gonna run um, a frequency separation here, this one, 16 bit. I'll also create a video in the future explaining why I use that one. Um, and I'm just gonna brush over here. Now, there's a good thing. If you t click open this layer, the black and white, and you start brushing on this one, make sure you go to your the eyedropper tool and the sampling is set to current and below because you don't wanna be sampling black and white and painting black and white and then you realize, oh my God, the image is colored and all my retouch was done black and white. You don't wanna do that, don't do it. Um, so now uh, if you select on the brush layer here everything is set to current and below so anything that is on this layer and below my eyedropper tool is going to pick and I can just paint away if you see here it's sampling color even though uh, she's on black and white okay so I'm just going to go like this I'm going to set opacity and flow to 20% and I'm just going to brush like that so this is a way that you can edit your images as well. It may not be uh, the industry standard if there is a standard, but it is also a, a new way to edit and I think it, it works pretty well. So I'm just gonna do this. I don't know if you can see the image transform already a bit. Now more here. I probably look very concentrated now. my retouching face okay, let me see this so I'll just unclick so you can see and this is what I've done so far so maybe I removed too much on this air but it's fine you can always go back and erase it so you can get an eraser set maybe flow uh, 10% and just brush like this so you can bring some of that light back but as far as the skin goes I think that's a pretty good job so you can see here before and after so now I'm just gonna work on the skin like this I'm not gonna be using this layer anymore just because I think the image is pretty good so I'm just gonna carry on with the brush layer like that
can zoom in close and just make sure all the areas are covered. And this girl, she is so nice. Other than being stunning, she is such a funny girl. I really enjoy taking her pictures. We had a lot of fun, even though she looks very serious here. <laughs> but she that's because she follows directions pretty well. Um, Serena, very nice name too. So, let's see. Fix the color of her lip too. And on this photo, I think she was 16 or 17. I think 16. No, or I don't know, one of the other. And that image that I showed you at the beginning, um, the other image I made of her, was published on Vogue Italia online or under the Photo Vogue division. It was quite nice. Okay, so I'm almost done. Okay, let me see. I think that's a pretty good job. See the the thing when you work by yourself, you pat yourself on the back. So yeah, Roberta, well done. That's pretty good. <laughs> I don't normally talk to myself though. Uh, but I'm not talking to myself right now, so I'm talking with the camera. Hopefully someone over there is listening to me and not muting me. Would you mute me? <laughs> okay, uh, let me get a few. Yes, no. I think that's actually pretty good. It looks really nice. Okay, so I'm going to do her hands now. Just gonna make sure everything is looking more even. Nice. And here you can see like a quick before and after. My gosh, it's so beautiful. All right, I really like this. Yep, I'm pretty pretty confident that I like it. Um, let's see, yeah. Okay, so now what I can do, I can run a a dodge burn and uh, dodge and burn layer but I would just run them individually here so I'm just gonna run a dodge and a burn like this I'm gonna put them over everything I'm gonna delete this black and white layer oh actually if I just turn on now you can see that the blemishes are mostly gone and then if I hide my frequency separation they are there see that's quite nice I like that uh, to use that kind of um, visual guide so I know uh, if the image is you know done properly and done well so okay so now on my dodge layer here 
I'm going to set my brush to 2% and I'm just going to lighten some areas on her face. This, and then with my burn I'm sort of going to contour her face a bit I'm gonna zoom out always zoom out so you can see what you're doing Okay, and with my dog, I'm just going to lighten that here to create that, um, how do you call it, the jaw, the, forgot the name, I know the name, but I just forgot now, the bone structure, maybe, cheekbones, that's it, that's the name. And now I'm going to use in her hand as well, burn. Barn makes it a little darker just so I can remove some of these high, the highlights here. And now with my dodge, I'm just going to bring some highlights where I want them to be. can see it before and after okay I really like it it's very nice so uh, next step is merge them all together actually there is a, a shortcut for this here which is merge visible duplicate so it just creates a fresh layer with everything that we worked on I'm just gonna merge them all now so here it's a uh, a before and after of the image so far and now if you see her hairline she's wearing a wig so I'm gonna fix this hairline but this is a bit more like a more skill skill a skillful job um, you will need to have a tablet and you need to have a little bit of patience so if you don't have neither, don't do it. <laughs> Ignore it. You can do a different way. But if you have it, you, I will do. I will do this way, and I did on the other image. So just select a hard uh, round pressure size here, the uh, brush, and I'm gonna set make it like about four, and brush set to dark, the same color of the hair, and opacity and follow 100%. And I'm just gonna stroke and delete just to see if I like it and I think it can be a little bit smaller I think two no I think three size three will be good Let's see yeah and now I'm gonna make this layer set to multiply and what I will do now I'm gonna rotate and I'm going to paint hair on her face right here Um, I'm gonna actually let me put set to normal and I'm gonna invert this so so I can see what I'm doing I'm painting with white right now so I can see what I'm doing and I'm creating giving her a hairline here And I have to do this quite a bit. 
ici. She looks like that girl from the X-Men with the white hair in front now. The, um, in Brazil, we call her Vampira, like, like she's like, um, like if she's a vampire, but I don't, uh, I think it's Rogue here, her name, Rogue. Right, like this. Hair is one of the worst things to edit on Photoshop. I don't like it. It's very difficult. It doesn't look natural most of the time. Uh, it takes a lot of work effort you know not my favorite thing okay now i'm gonna invert back to black so you can see and here a before and after can't see much but if i let me see duplicate maybe better so what I will do, I'm going to hide this now, create an empty layer, get a um, healing brush. I'm going to get very close, going to sample the area near to her wig here. and just going to try to remove this harsh line right here. Just very gently like that. So now there is not much there. And I'm going to get a clone stamp tool, set it to 30% uh, opacity and flow. And I'm going to select an area right here. And I'm just going to get some of the her natural hair to blend. So I'm going to copy here and I'm just dragging like that. And now I'm going to activate the layer I was working on. And I'm going to carry on working on this layer. So creating hair. Quite tedious, but we're going to get there. Almost done. Promise. Ten more hours and it will be fine. <sighs> Joking. So if you're not watching this live, uh, which you probably shouldn't because I, because I put this vi video to be private, so I can just make sure <laughs> the video is okay before I release it. Uh, you can just skip this for maybe two minutes or less, maybe a minute and a half. Not very good with time. All right. Let me see. Invert. That's better. And you can just make a brighter layer just to see what you're working on. Because it's too dark and then you don't know if you're following the hair. This, you know, the hair way. The hair way, you know, this thing here. All right, so yeah, I think that's pretty good. Come on, that's great. Is it? Is it great? I think that's fine. Okay, so I'm done with that. Just gonna blend them. So here you can see a before and after. Always do your before and after so you don't lose track of what you're doing or you don't overdo it. So here you can see what I've done so far, before and after. And what we can do, I have also an action here that's called, um, where is it, eye color change? You know, it's something I, where did I put, oh, eyes clean up is just supposed to be red and it's green. So when you click the eye clean up, <clears throat> 
he removes the redness and makes it a little bit more uh, brighter. So it's great if your clients have red eyes or some veins in their eyes because this is supposed to remove that. So I'm going to show you how it works after the progress bar finishes. All right. So uh, I have here everything that I need. So the layer, you don't need to worry about that. Just make sure you get like a soft round brush. And I'm going to make this brush slightly harder, like maybe 45, 48. I'm going to select the, the black layer and I'm going to select a white color right here. And I can just paint. Oh, that was too much. It's okay. I'll just do too much so you can see. Queens. Queens that are like that. I think her eyes are too bright, but here you, can, you know what that tool does. So you can just un reduce the opacity a bit. So maybe more, maybe like this. So we, we brighten her eyes a bit, but not much. We still keep kept the texture there of her natural eyes. It's just a little bit more cleaner. Okay, 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 and now um, not too sure if I should remove some of the shine on her face, but let's see, let's see how it looks. I'm just gonna get a clone stamp tool. I'm gonna set the opacity to 20 and flow 20. Just gonna try to remove some of these hot spots here on her nose, just a little bit. I'm just brushing, just sampling some skin tone nearby and trying to smooth the, the tone a bit. I think this will be nice, a nice touch. And zoom out a bit. Yeah, let's see before and after. I don't think that's too bad. So I'm just going to create another burn layer and set the opacity to 100 down flow 2%. And I'm just going to fix, uh, just bring some slight darkness in certain areas. The next thing I will do, and now I'm just going to try and cancel some of the 
the hot spots on her dress and I'm gonna invert this layer I'm gonna get a flow brush to 10 of 10 percent and I'm just gonna oh that was too much two percent just gonna try and tone it down a bit see here something is not all right even and now it is okay if you see her dress I think maybe makeup touched here it's a bit dirty so I'm gonna fix this way I'm gonna create a hue and saturation and I think that color is about red so I'm gonna get the red and I'm just gonna put to the side maybe a little hint of green Okay, and I'm gonna invert this now, get a brush set to 20%. Uh, I'm gonna paint over here just to cancel that. And slightly brighten. Oh, too much, 2%. and slightly dark so I create like a few different so dark light remove the redness with saturation tone it down a bit and a bit on her face too and then remove the shiny and now I'm going to create another layer over right here. And I'm going to just merge it down. So this was the next step, the before and after of the next step and the full before and after. And what else can I do? I think the image is pretty much done. I really like how the image looks. I'm just trying to see if there is anything else that I haven't seen yet. All right, so final steps would be, I can add some shine to her hair. So there is a dark hair shine over here. And if I just select a brush, that 10% brush there flow, I can just paint over, maybe too much. Maybe let's do 4% slightly just giving some shine here where the hair is visible and then the next one is dark skin glow I love the dark skin glow so I'm gonna select a flow of 5% to begin and maybe it's too much maybe it is too much it is too much I'll do 2% and I'm gonna go close and what I do now, anywhere there is some highlight, I will just slightly brush near, like that, over. maybe overdone the highlight I think I did and we can do this on her hands too
and see her outfit. No, I think that's pretty good now. Yeah. So I'm just going to merge this all together. And you can see before and after. And what you can do, um, there is a grain filter. You can add this filter to your image. So if I zoom in close, you can see the grain before and after. If it want more, you just control the opacity. If you want to add grain to your images I like a little bit not too much grain maybe like around 50 50 like this it's just a bit you see the background really makes the subject pop um, there is also a uh, an action for a toning here and if you roll, run the golden tone, color, golden color tone, it does this to the image, which I really like. Um, and then you can just control the opacity. I think that's really beautiful for this image. Or there is also a cinematic tone, color tone that I created. Um, but I don't think it would be the greatest for this image. I think the other one works better. Unless we combine them, because you can always combine the both of them. Ooh, I, I think I quite like it like this. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I love it. All right, so I'm just going to merge visible again, the top one, with the filter. Just going to combine this. So... This is with the filter and this is with without the filter and you can add anything you want and this is the finished image and the before image before and after before and after and this is it guys I hope this was helpful and useful that and hope you enjoyed and you learned something I'm sorry if my English sometimes doesn't make sense YouTube is new to me. I'm really, I just really enjoy taking pictures and editing them. And I thought, you know, during this time now with this coronavirus everywhere, I thought it would be something nice to do and share some of my knowledge with people that are into photography as well. So if you have any questions, any suggestions, don't forget to go on the comments below and ask away and any requests as well. That would be great. I plan on finishing my actions um, this week, so they will be for sale on my website. So you can just return to this video, there will be a link there, or you can just ask me anywhere, you know, follow me on my social media. The links are all in the description. And yeah, I hope you stay safe and I'll see you guys soon. Actually, you see me soon. <laughs> Bye now.